Hillary Clinton took heat for calling Trump supporters deplorable, and now Bill Clinton is probably not helping things by saying this. The other guy's base is what I grew up in. You know, I'm basically your standard redneck. The former president also took aim at the Fox News Channel viewers. He recounted a moment during the primary when the Clinton camp knew they couldn't hold West Virginia. I went down to West Virginia to talk about this because she said, there's no way we can carry it now. Is there? I said, no way. I said, you know, they, first of all, they only watch Fox News. Now, I think that he meant that as an insult. It wasn't. <laughs> but he calls himself a redneck, basically. Yeah, th no. Uh, it's actually, if you think about it, it's a compliment because he just said all of Trump's supporters are capable of becoming a two-term president because he grew up with them. So that, I don't think he meant it as a compliment, but it actually could be looked that way. Look, uh, Bill Clinton is lucky. He has what's called the PPP, which is called the, oh, progressive, you know, the progressive Pig Pass. As long as you are a progressive yeah. leftist, nice recovery. you can get away with it. You can get away with anything. That's why you remember that the staunchest defenders of Bill Clinton during the sex scandals were feminists who targeted the accusers like his wife had done and implied that everything was consensual. It's because as long as you are progressive and you are on the political side of a feminist, you can get away with anything. And that means denigrating entire groups of people, uh, um, targeting women because, you know, they, they had sex with your, your husband. Um, as long as you're for feminism and for empowerment, you can do whatever you want, as he has proved. It is kind of irresistible for um, a lot of people on the left, Eric, for them to uh, denigrate Fox News viewers or Fox News hosts and things, even though they would like to come on the show sometimes, especially when they write books. Mm, very yeah. nice. Um, so I also think it was a compliment. Yeah. I don't think he meant it as a compliment, but I'd certainly rather be a redneck than a limousine liberal, a redneck than a intolerant liberal or a left wing nut. That said, that's just me. But um, but I, he's getting pushed back because he's lumping all the, the group as a certain type. He's typecasting the whole group. And as you know, when you do that, you can be considered racist, sexist, Islamophobic, or whatever. <laughs> Moving on. Um, I, Months ago, I said they should pull Bill Clinton off the campaign trail, and they should. He fought with the Marine. That was bad for her. Oh, I he called, that. Yeah. He, yeah, he, he called Obamacare this crazy system. That was bad for her. And now this, this right. is going to be the term <laughs> uh, bad for her. It's time to pull him back. Or, if, you know, if you're a GOP Republican, keep him just what he's doing. Right, and he is very popular, Kimberly, like, amongst uh, Democrats. And actually, I think he's kind of one of those characters that because he has that charisma, you are drawn to watch him and listen to what he says. I don't necessarily think he's a huge drawback for Hillary Clinton, but I'm sure that her campaign, every time he goes out, they might just hold their breath to see what the tapes are going to send back. Yeah, it's like the gaff gasp. They're like, okay, what's going to happen next? But he is popular. I mean, he really is. There's people that are Republicans that like him too, you know, in, in certain circles. But when he goes into a, a crowd, whether it's a small room or a big room, he knows how to work it. He's always been a very good politician and knows how to get it done. He's more popular than she is. That's the thing. So, you know, obviously they're going to try to use him because they're, they're down to Al Gore, climate Gore. You know, they've got a few people. They've got Tim Kaine. I don't know how much good he's even really done her, to be quite honest. He didn't uh, d do a good performance during the debate. But so you see with something like this, like, they're going to put him out there. He is a former president, so he's still a resource. But all of this information that's coming out is just, there's such a huge stack. You're like, Oof, whoa. It's like cramming the night before the exam. There's so much. You're like, where do you even get started going through the list and the litany. And as for rednecks, look, I like guns, I like religion, I like my beer, but with the lime. So, you know, and like, I like men uh, who work with their hands band outside. players, guitar players. Yep, we do. We like them. We do. Um, Juan, is it hard for Bill Clinton to be both a former president and a statesman and a partisan trying to help his wife get elected to the presidency? No, I think he's a big fan of his wife. I think he was. No, I know. But I mean, like, in terms of he has... As a former president, you ha that comes with some uh, responsibility, or I would say some ability to sort of be up above partisan politics. But when he goes out on the campaign trail, he ends up making a statement like this that w would seem... Well, by the way, I think this statement is totally being misinterpreted by all of you. About I mean, Fox News viewers? No, no, no. What he said was, he's saying to his audience, I mean, you can read the transcript. He says, tell them I want them to be a part of America, to feel included, to not feel isolated I agree with or that. pushed right. to the side. That's what Bill Clinton was saying. And then he comes back and says quite explicitly, we need people. We want them to feel that they're part of America and that they're not being 
somehow, you know, shunned or demeaned by the conversation that's going on in the Democratic Party. That's like, what he was saying. Like, like basket of deplorables? Basket of deplorables. By the way, she was right. But I'm just well, going to say, I just think on this nice. one, right about what? she's right that some people who have very harsh attitudes about blacks, about gays, they have deplorable she, attitudes, she, okay? She, didn't, she said half of Trump supporters are a basket She of apologized for saying half. She did not apologize for saying deplorables because I think there are some people who have deplorable attitudes on Sir, the far right. deplorables in every organization. Well, fine, then you agree. Every fine. Party. But I'm just saying in terms of what Bill Clinton no. said that Dana's talking half about. of the people that voted for Trump, uh, it was somewhere, what do you I would never say that she was right and that 13? people are deplorable there and are also some deplorable irredeemable. People in this world. That's not but I'm just Christian, saying in terms of this segment, what we're talking about with Bill Clinton, what Bill Clinton said was very clearly, tell people who are, uh, you know, as he said, grew up with him in rural Arkansas, wherever, yeah. tell them they're part of America, we need them, we want them to progress. And when he was talking about West Virginia, he pointed out he won West Virginia twice. Right. And then he said, that's why I don't believe that we can't, Hillary Clinton, no, go back No, and that's true. I mean, there's a reason why uh, George W. Bush and his election effort and, and the re-election in 2004 went back to West Virginia yes. over and over again because it was on the cusp. Correct. I think now it's reliably a red state but, for now, but it could change. The unspeakable truth here is that Bill Clinton would be a Fox News viewer if he wasn't married to Hillary. He might be a if Fox you remember, News viewer. If you remember the mid-90s, I mean, when you think about how the country has shifted. for obvious reasons? What? I don't. I didn't hear you. Why Bill Clinton would be a Fox viewer? Because he's, he's he was reliably center right in the yeah. '90s, and and I think that there are more, he has more in common with Fox News than probably CNN or MSNBC. But if I were Hillary, I would send him to Club Med for the rest of the month in a small <laughs> country, make it clothing optional to save him the time of packing. Well, that would be um, that's a good way to, to take carry-on luggage. Yes. And not have to pack a bag. Um, there's another uh, controversy that's swirling today, and I'm going to try to set this up, and then we're going to talk about it. It's regarding some WikiLeaks emails um, that were released, and in particular, this conversation between two Hillary Clinton staffers about Catholics, and whether uh, this is true or not, um, I guess remains a question. But here is apparently what the emails that were released said, um, basically saying that. Uh, Catholics have a bastardization of the faith. Um, they're totally unaware of Christian democracy, um, socially acceptable, politically conservative religion, uh, that they don't know what the hell they're talking about when they talk about Thomistics. And it gets a little bit complicated and, and detailed. You can read these emails. We'll have them for you on our Facebook page. And they've been talked about all day. Now, Greg, the <laughs> Catholics as a voting bloc, which you are... You grew up Catholic, right. but you do not profess to right. be a part of it anymore. So Jennifer Palmieri, the st one of the staffers on this, says she does not recognize the email. Mm -hmm. um, she, in fact, I think that we have her on tape saying that earlier today. I'm a Catholic. I don't recognize that email um, that, uh, that we saw. We're not going to fact check each of the emails that, have was, that were stolen. Uh, hacked uh, by a Russian-led effort and then leaked by a Russian-led effort in an effort to her campaign. So we have a situation with WikiLeaks continuing to put out a whole bunch of information. Right. WikiLeaks, which is um, basically finding, hack, hacking into emails, releasing them, the campaign saying that they don't know about it, and the Catholics saying, this is actually a deplorable thing to do to the Catholic religion. What do you make of all of it? All right. Well, it's two different stories. Number one, uh, does anybody really believe this is coming from WikiLeaks? WikiLeaks is the receptacle. That's like a child who thinks money originates from her dad's wallet. It doesn't. There, it is being sent to WikiLeaks, and then WikiLeaks releases it. If it's Russia, it's something that we as a country should be concerned about. And just because it happens to target a candidate you don't like isn't enough for me, because when they're done with her, they're going to come after everybody else. And if you work in industries, let's say, that are affected, that uh, the left believes affects the climate, if you work in the oil industry or automotive industry, you could be targeted for this. That's the first part of the story. The second part is, in general, religious people are seen as freaks by the media because the media is so detached from them. I've been on both sides. I've been, you know, Catholic for 12 years and so on. But I can tell that they, in the media, generally they see people who are religious as Martians. They don't understand it. The interesting thing, Eric, I look back on some of the numbers. And so um, Catholics as a group have not yeah. voted for Republicans in, in, as a majority since 1984. Um, and the Trump campaign did jump on this today, I think, trying to say, look, this is how, she, this is how they talk about you behind closed doors. Um, do you think that you can turn that around with the Catholics? Uh, here, so um, 
First of all, I'm going to say I'm a Christian, I'm a Catholic, and I'm highly offended by the comments, highly offended by it, practicing every day. I think what they, the, the, the theory was, and I think what they were going for was to divide and conquer. Let's divide Catholics from evangelicals or divide Catholics as a subset of Christians who are bastardizing Christianity. That's highly offensive, and I think this is going to blow up in their face. I think if you're on the fence, if you're undecided, and you're Catholic, even if you're Christian and not Catholic, you, you have to take offense to this. Here's why. When, if President Clinton, Hillary Clinton, um, is going to stack the Supreme Court and the federal judicial system, will your religious freedoms come under attack? A lot of Catholics and a lot of Christians believe that under Clinton, they, that may become an issue at the Supreme Court level. I would say this is a net negative for Hillary Clinton, big time. Um, I saw Father Jonathan Morris speak twice at, at, on Fox about this, and he was very you know, passionate and eloquent, talking about the importance of freedom of religion and what we see happening throughout the world, and you see genocide against Christians. And this is a time that the United States should be leading in protecting faith and religious freedoms with everything that we have in our Constitution. So these emails, I think, are very damaging. I do not believe her when she says she did not send them. I think it's convenient for them to say and blame it on the Russians because that ties uh, Trump into Putin. It's clever, but I don't, I don't believe it. When I hear her say it and I saw her saying it, I don't know. It just seems very convenient. So WikiLeaks went through and uh, edited how many 20,000 something plus emails, maybe even more. It's a bit much to swallow. So I just, uh, yeah, and as a Catholic too, I mean, you know, but this is not really a surprise to me. You don't think I'm the Russians are involved? Well, I don't know if it's Russians or the Chinese or Doesn't but, that bother you? You know, the North Koreans. Of course it does. It Maybe that said it's, it, it's of course it bothers me that it's another, anyone it's, thinks that's that's good one. It, it, it bothers me if it's somebody here doing yeah. it. Well, let me just tell you, this is such a bizarre conversation because she didn't write the email. The email comes to her from a guy who is interested in the relationship of Catholics and politics and yes. especially big right. donors and the like. And, and he's saying this. Jennifer Palmer didn't say it. Nobody in the Clinton campaign said it. Then she responds and says something about, well, maybe these folks who are becoming Roman Catholic don't want to become evangelicals because their rich friends wouldn't understand it. That's all it was said. So all this stuff about I'm deeply offended and, yeah, oh, this is going to explode. If someone there says something zero, racist to me, Juan, this, this I say, not, number one, this that's is racist. Not I racist. walk out, uh, walk this is out not of the conversation. I don't continue the conversation you, with you a racist. You are missing the point here, Eric. This is not anti-Catholic. Really? This is simply saying, and we have these freedoms in our country, if you have a difference of perspective or theology, right. you can express it. And you can say, hey, somebody is playing a social status game in terms of saying they're, they're, they're comfortable becoming a Catholic as opposed to becoming an evangelical. It's almost saying, why are they doing that? Because if they're truly really having this kind of conversion, why don't they become an evangelical? So I don't get, I mean, you guys, it looks to me like you're trying to find something, something to give no, something but he has to a right Trump to be or able some to reason to find a He has a right to be able to say if he finds that. Well, I'm just saying, but she religion, didn't, just like but I let's, do. But let's just, just like, be clear. Just like you have, right. Jennifer Palmer did not write if it. If I'm having a, a conversation, a cup of coffee with someone on the corner who happens yeah. to be throwing out racial epithets left and right, using right. it, and I stand there and, and continue this conversation, and you walk by, That's don't so you say, Bowling, what is wrong with you? Why would you walk away from that There were no epithets. The no, man was expressed, no, but really, because I yeah. feel, he, I feel being called uh, bastardizing Christianity. He was bastardizing. Highly, highly offensive. The kids, the, no, the, there is a key uh, difference that someone has is. to be, make clear at the end of this segment. Go ahead, Greg. Okay, religion is a set of ideas. Right. Okay, Relig any religion, whether it's Islam, Buddhism, Catholicism, you name it, it's a set of ideas. It's not race. Thank God. And it is, it is, he, nobody on her campaign actually wrote the bastardization of No. Faith. That was someone from outside, so we should right. Right. I, I, I'm Thank not you. suggesting she wrote it. I'm right. suggesting that was the comment that was made, and Palmieri, whoever it was, the campaign continued a, an email conversation with someone who was saying highly offensive things to a group that, I, that I'm part of. All right, coming up.